Hello and welcome. Today I want to talk about what programming languages you should learn in 2021. And there are a lot of videos out there on YouTube that try to tell you exactly what programming language you should learn to land a programming job in one month from now, three months from now, whatever, or that tell you what programming language you should learn to make uh, 100,000 US dollars annual salary. And if that is your motivation to learn a program language, this video is probably not for you. Why? Because it really depends on your passion and you need to have fun when you wanna do programming. It's not about making money or getting a job. Of course, that's important. Don't get me wrong. Money is important. Having a job is important, but you need to do something you really enjoy and you really love. And the field of programming is so big and you have so many opportunities that also the language that you learn might play a big role here. So stay tuned if you want to learn what language you should learn when you want to go in web development, what language you should learn when you want to go in app development for iOS or Android, what you should learn when you want to do game development, or maybe you want to do something entirely different and go into data science, machine learning, or embedded systems. So the, the, the first question that you need to ask yourself is, what is it that I'm interested in? What is it that I'm passionate about that I want to do with programming? What's the problem that I like solving? Is the problem how to create a computer game? Is the problem writing a mobile app? Or is the problem maybe making a website? The second thing that's important and even more important than the program language that you are going to learn is while you are learning a programming language, you learn the basics of computer science. What are variables? What are other data types? What are data structures? How can you build an algorithm? What is a way to control control flow or um, what's a loop? Stuff like that is something, once you have learned the concept, you will see it in one form or the other in many, many program languages that you encounter. And I've programmed in many different programming languages, also in, in different use cases from web development to app development to embedded systems and also um, uh, scientific software. So the, the, the one thing they all have in common is they use the same basic principles that you learn in computer science. And these basic principles are of course best learned while applying them in practice, see them in action while programming in the programming language. So let's dive right into it. The first programming language that you might want to consider learning in 2021 is Java. Java is a very versatile language. It's also one of the languages that, for instance, you would learn when you study computer science and that you can use on almost any operating system, at least on a computer operating system, whether that might be Linux, macOS, Windows because it's hardware independent and runs in a virtual machine. It also is a language that's object oriented. So that means you're working with uh, classes and inheritance and things like that, which can make it a little bit difficult for a beginner um, because you really have to embrace and understand the concept of object orientation to really completely understand how Java works. But once you have learned it, you can build Android apps, you can build web applications and, and you can build desktop applications. And if that's what you're passionate about, Java 
might be a good language to learn. The next one is C or C++, which is in fact two languages. Um, there is C and then there's C++, which sort of adds the object orientation to C. Both C and C++ are really used in a lot of performance applications. So whenever performance, timing, and every micro or millisecond counts, C or C++ are your friend. They also require you to actively manage the memory you are using, which is sometimes tricky and a little bit of an overhead, especially when you start learning programming, but is something that comes in handy when you work in environment where memory is a concern which is, for instance, when you develop embedded systems. They're both timing and memory consumption is a concern and that's why their C and C++ is quite heavily used. Also, performance concerns make C and C++ the language to be used, especially C++ for game development or, for instance, for browser development. So all C and C++ is also a good language if you want to go low level, which means closer to the hardware. Um, so for instance, if you want to develop drivers for Windows or Linux, C++ might be the language that you need for that. Speaking of C, there also is a language called C Sharp and C Sharp is a language that is encountered quite often in relation with Windows and in, in general the Microsoft.NET framework. You can build Windows application with it. Um, you can build also websites or do web development with C Sharp and uh, active server pages. And there are also already some frameworks available like Summarine where you can use C Sharp for app development. C Sharp is closer to Java than to C or C++, at least in my opinion. That's why when you have previously learned Java, you might find C Sharp interesting just to add to your portfolio because it's very close. And especially if your goal, your passion is developing apps that are, let's say, in the Microsoft environment in Windows, um, then C Sharp might be a very good fit for you. Next up, we have one of the probably most popular and fastest growing programming languages right now, which is Python. And Python is a language that is very easy to learn, especially because of its syntax, because it has a very pseudocode like syntax and it's used in, in a lot of fields. You can do web development with it. You can just build some scripts to automate your workflow, which might be an interesting use case. Um, it's used in machine learning and artif artificial intelligence, which might be something that's interesting or um, it's also used in data science. So if your passion is analyzing big data sets, working with data, exploring data, then Python might be really the best fit for you. Next up is PHP. PHP is quite an old programming language and the main focus really is web development. Uh, depending on where you look and what statistics you read, uh, as much as 25% of the internet websites that uh, you use or that are out there are running on PHP. One of the most famous uh, application that is built with PHP is probably WordPress. So if your passion is building websites or you will have already a WordPress blog, for instance, that you use, and you want to build your first plugins there and just do more web development, then PHP is a very good fit 
for you. And last but not least, JavaScript. JavaScript is different than Java. It's really a, a script language and it's very versatile. It's mostly used or used to be mostly used in front-end development. So everything that's running in the browser for um, the user interface that you see in the web is to a large extent JavaScript. But with frameworks like React or React Native, you can also build native apps, iOS apps, Android apps with JavaScript or with React Native and JavaScript. So that's uh, another big plus here. The big plus here also is that with learning one language, you can build apps for both platforms. So you can write one React Native app and it's running both on iOS and on Android. And there is even some ways of also creating desktop apps out of React Native apps. One thing that makes JavaScript also very easy to use, especially for beginners, is you don't have to install anything. You don't need a compiler. You don't need to install an in interpreter. You don't need a virtual machine. The only thing you need is a text editor where you can write your JavaScript code and a browser. That's it. And that's probably the simplest way to start with programming. So in summary, all of the before mentioned programming languages are good ways to start programming. It really depends on what you are passionate about. If you are, um, let's say forced in university right now to learn one of those languages or even another one that we didn't talk about here, it still has value, even if it's not exactly the, the language that fits to your use case and to what you're passionate about and what you want to create. But it really has the value that you are learning the basics, you learn about data types, you learn about data structures, you learn about how to write an algorithm in code. And all that will help you learning your next language. So every programming language that you learn helps you getting better at understanding those principles of computer science. Also learning different programming languages will help you getting a better understanding of the nuances and the differences between those basic concepts and how they are implemented in one program language um, or the other. So you can't pick the wrong one. And that would also be my conclusion. It doesn't really matter which one you pick. It's good that you start and you should start as soon as possible. Just pick one, learn it. You will learn the basics. And if you decide in half a year from now that C is not for you because you want to do something else you want to do web development and that's not something that usually is done in C absolutely no problem and the effort of learning C will not be wasted every skill that you learn and programming languages are a part of that has value that being said learn a language pick one and start ideally today if you like this video and if you want to see more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to my channel. That really means a lot to me. And if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. That also means a lot to me. And if you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment down below and I will definitely read it and respond to you.